Dracula the Dark Lord isn't dead by daylight as its newest killer, but is he good or is he garbage? This is just my day one first impressions of him, so take all of this with just a grain of salt, but I won't sugarcoat it. He sucks. A lot, actually. Now, okay, that's just a bit of hyperbole, but he has a lot of issues like as many as PTB Vecna did, but he's not that bad. He's in a much more playable state. Let's start off with his main ability, the Hellfire Spell. This is a beam attack that goes for 7 meters and cannot go through walls, but it can hit over windows and pallets. This will be a common aspect of Dracula where his power is similar to a lot of other killers, but worse in basically every aspect. So let's compare it to the other abilities that are similar to it, Nemesis's Tentacle Strike and Pyramid Head's Punishment of the Damned. With Nemesis, you quickly raise your tentacle and do an attack that can break pallets, or you can quickly cancel it if you need to, but it's very narrow and hard to hit. Then with Pyramid Head, you need a bit of time to get the beam ready to shoot, then you can launch it, which goes through walls, and while you're holding it, you move at 110% movement speed, so you're still a threat and you can cancel it relatively quickly. Dracula, however, he takes a long time to charge up the beam, which doesn't go through walls and takes ages to cancel. With Nemesis, you can at least drag your tentacle to move the hitbox around, which is an important tech with Nemesis, and like I mentioned with Pyramid Head, his attack will go through walls. With Dracula though, it doesn't do any of that. It's just the worst aspect of all of them. It's slow, clunky, unreliable, easy to bait, and hard to hit. Sure, it still is a beam attack that can hit over windows and pallets, but I mean, if you look at how long it takes before you can actually attack a survivor with it, or until you can use your attack after you cancel it, survivors will have enough time to just dodge the attack, or wait until you cancel it, then vault the window or pallet, and they'll just get out of the attack for free. Compared to, again, Nemesis who can break pallets, quickly attack, and drag a lingering hitbox around, or Pyramid Head which can hit through walls, move at 110% movement speed while charging it, and cancel it somewhat quickly. The only good thing about it, I guess, is that it has a relatively quick cooldown, but I mean, compared to Nemesis and Pyramid Heads, which are basically just as fast, if not faster, I mean Nemesis can spam his Tentacle Strike, and Pyramid Head can basically spam his Beam too. It having a cooldown just makes it even worse. Sure, it does have more range than Tentacle Strike, but I mean, it's on a cooldown, you move slower, you can't break pallets, etc, etc, it's just worse in basically every way. Honestly, considering how small the hitbox is on it, and you can't drag it or position it quickly like an alien or nemesis, it really should just be able to hit through walls. So far, people have experimented, and it can basically hit over anything that's about survivor's height. Though, it's really unreliable right now and pretty buggy, because at times, the flames will just not go through things at all even though they should. I mean, look at this clip. Why did it just stop? It's it's really buggy right now. This is definitely just a PTB thing, so it won't really matter hopefully when it goes live, but still right now it has a lot of issues like I mentioned. Now onto the other two thirds of his kit and that's his shape shifting ability. And honestly, this ability might be even worse than the flame pillars. Let's start off with his wolf form. I'll be blunt, this form sucks a lot. It is really bad and it's borderline useless. Wolf Form allows Dracula to transform into a wolf that gains Predator and Bloodhound base kit. Along with that, survivors will drop scent orbs occasionally that direct Dracula where the survivor is, and when picked up, recharge his pounce ability by a bit and gives him haste. His pounce ability lets him perform two quick tiny dashes in succession that can break pallets and walls. So let's start off with the pounce ability since that's the wolf's main ability. Pounce sucks, like a lot, it's actually really bad, like even worse than Flame Pillar. It has a lengthy amount of startup and feels incredibly clunky to use. Whenever you pounce, your second dash will instantly come out. Unlike Blight, Wesker, or Nurse, who get time in between their dashes to reposition or get aligned, you know, get their bearings and do that second attack, Dracula just says no, we go now. Meaning that even if you want to attempt to land the second hit, you have to flick really hard, so sorry controller players. The hitbox is also really tiny and precise too. I've had times where I literally just slide off of a survivor. If Pounce had charges like everyone else and a window to properly charge your second attack, the ability would be much easier to use, and also is the fact that if you do bounce it into a wall or anything, you get stunned and instantly knocked out of your ability so you can't use your second pounce at all. Meaning that you can't do anything like try and bounce into a tree and then use the, your second dash to hit the survivor, no, as soon as you hit that tree, the second dash is ended and cancelled. Or alternatively to make this better, just make the attack faster to charge up, or make it move quicker or give it a bigger hitbox because as is right now it's just really underwhelming and breaking pallets is basically useless because it takes just as long as breaking it normally without any add-ons for it like how Demogorgon has one. Plus it eats up the whole ability which without any scent orb it takes a while to recharge. Then we get to actually playing in the wolf mode and it actually lies to you. This might be a bug but right now it lies to you this is just false. 
It says that while in wolf mode, your movement speed is increased, but you actually move slower while you're in wolf mode. The only way to regain decent speed in this mode is that when survivors occasionally drop their ascent orbs, those give you haste. So if you want to chase in wolf mode, you constantly fluctuate between going slow, fast, slow, fast. It just, it doesn't feel fun to play as, honestly. It feels clunky and just obtuse. Overall, wolf mode just feels really useless to use because it's not really good in any scenario. If you want to use it for tracking, Bloodhound and Predator are already some of the worst perks in the game, and if you have more than 50 hours playing as killer, you already know how to track someone really well. I get that it's supposed to be a tracking mode, but I mean, the Scent Orb's aura reading detection area is so small that you can't even use it to scout out an area around you and see if anyone's nearby because the radius is probably only something around like maybe 16 meters around you and the orbs quickly fade away. Like in this clip here, I know that Trevor is nearby the exit gates, but the orb spawns so infrequently and the detection range is so small that I just can't sniff him out. One good thing about wolf mode though I'll say is that since you do go into third person and you're smaller, it's kind of like a different version of Chucky where you don't leave footprints behind that the survivors can see, meaning that you can, in some like short tiny loops, mind game because the survivors can't really see how tall you are flying around the loop. But since when you do backpedal as Dracula in wolf mode, you move much lower, it's much harder to use. So overall, wolf mode is just slow, clunky, pounce sucks, the tracking sucks, it's just, there's no real reason to ever go into wolf mode. It's bad in every aspect. Last but not least is his bat form, which is probably his best power overall. It feels the most consistent. Bat form makes it so that you turn into a bat that can fly over pallets and windows while undetectable and you move quicker. You also gain the ability to teleport to any nearby windows or dropped pallets. However, while in bat form, you cannot see survivors, only hear them and see scratch marks. Bat form so far has felt the most consistent to use, but it still has its fair share of flaws. First off is the whole not being able to see survivors part. I get that it wouldn't be fair to see survivors while you're undetectable flying around everywhere quickly and teleporting all over the map. However, while you're in bat mode, you're still very easy to see coming and you make a lot of noise, like a lullaby while you're in bat mode. So even though you're undetectable, it's still really easy to figure out where Dracula is. And then when you do teleport, like say to a window, survivors do get notified about it and they get, you know, ample time to run away compared to Dredge who can quickly teleport like to a locker behind a gen and, you know, be right there. But with Dracula, you slowly teleport to a window and I've had times where I teleport to a window near a gen and survivors are already long gone because it's a slow teleport that's in close range. So they already know you're in the general area, right? Because the like flapping of bat noise and the screeches and stuff. Teleporting feels nice because whatever way you look when you come out of your teleport is the way you're facing. So if you teleport to a window that's near a generator and you're looking at the generator when you finish the teleport, you'll be facing the generator when you get out, unlike, you know, unknown where it's really clunky to teleport with that. However, bats have a really tiny teleport range, like maybe 30 meters I want to guess. Along with that is that when you do teleport, survivors do get a pretty generous notification of when you're coming, like teleporting to that window, so you can never really like teleport and sneak up to a survivor like you can with say Dredge. And then when you do transform, there is a cooldown on it, so you can't just turn into a bat, fly over a pallet, transform back, and then hit them, no. You have to fly over it, wait for the cooldown, and then wait to transform back and gain control again. It's not really a viable tactic unless it's a god pallet, just like what Vecna, Wesker, Chucky, etc, etc can. So it's not really like a good tech to use. However, though, one good thing about bat form is that you can destroy and damage stuff while you're in bat form. So what you can do is if you see a survivor like stun you and they're running away or they have lied, you can break the pallet while you're in bat form and then quickly catch up to them, which is, actually feels really nice to use. So it's not really an in chase tool. It's more of a catch up tool, just like Vecna's fly. Though I will say, though, if they made it so that you could see injured survivors while you're in bat mode, it would be good because, you know, he's a vampire blood bleeding survivors like come on how do you fumble it that bad overall dracula definitely isn't as bad as say ptv vecna but he still just doesn't feel fun to play they definitely played him really safe again like ptv vecna where all this stuff is slow it's missing some stuff that it needs it just needs he just needs some love he needs some care put into his kit just like what happened with vecna where he feels actually playable now his kit does feel playable like a lot better than Vecna's did, but it just feels underwhelming to play. Pouncing with Wolf is really hard to hit, Wolf is slow, Bat, it's kind of hard to find people sometimes because if you fly up to someone or they're crouching, you know, Iron Will, something like that, you just can't find them. Flame Pillar is really hard to hit, hard to use compared to, you know, Tentacle Strike or Pyramid Head, etc, etc. If PTB Vecna was a 3 out of 10, PTB Dracula is about a 5. I can see the potential and he's definitely in a much better spot than Vecna, however his kit is severely undertuned and way weaker than about 60% of DBD's roster who have quicker, more consistent abilities. 
I know that people will always say, oh, well, you can't just make it stronger than other killer's abilities because then no one would play as that killer. But I mean, Wolfworm's attacks are just awful to use compared to everyone else's. Hellfire is worse than Nemesis, Pyramid Head, and Alien special abilities. And Batform is worse than Dredge's teleport since it's only nearby and you can't see survivors while you're in it. He's definitely in a much better spot than Vecna was on the PTV. However, right now he's definitely a B to B minus killer who's just too slow to really keep up with good survivors because again, his abilities are very easy to bait and dodge. Hellfire takes too long to cancel, Pounce is easy to dodge and you, you know, move way slower while you're in it, and Bats you can just crouch to avoid and he won't find you. Overall, I feel like this killer is cl very close to being good, just like how Vecna is. Honestly, he's just really close to Vecna. I mean, it's the same thing where you have multiple powers you want to switch through and use them for different, you know, scenarios. But right now, I mean, just like all of them kind of suck except for Bat mode. Hellfire is too hard to hit people. Wolf isn't good at tracking or finding people or, you know, breaking pallets anything really wolf mode wolf mode just sucks wolf mode definitely needs the most care put into it right now and bat mode you know it's good for catching up mobility that sort of stuff but it's just not really all there i don't really have much else to say though other than take care of yourselves and have a damn good one peace